Welcome to Eastside Group's podcast, where each week Pastor Chad Mann and Emily Watson will chat about the need for discipleship, what it is, and how we as believers and as a church are working towards being disciples who make disciples. If you're new to our podcast, Eastside is a church who exists to transform Fort Smith and beyond. Our purpose here at Eastside is to gather, grow, and go. Learn more about us at myeastside.tv. Let's get started. Hey everybody, we're back here on Eastside Groups Podcast. I'm Emily, and it's Girls' Day today, so we have uh, Kaylee Johnson here with me and Rebecca Dubina. Hey, y'all. Hello. How's it going? So far, so good. (laughs) They're excited because um, we're having some time together, and the kids are having time, and they're away. So it's really nice to just, it's really quiet in here, right? It's quiet. We're all <laughs> We just kind of want to enjoy it. So um, on today's podcast, we want to talk about women's discipleship and discipling women. So we kicked Chad out for this podcast and wanted to really talk about what discipleship looks like for uh, different seasons of our lives, especially as women. And so growing up, what was discipleship like for y'all? Like, did anyone pour into you? Did you have a clue about about what it was? What did it look like? Uh, I'll go first. Um, I think for me, my initial understanding of discipleship was just evangelism, salvation, Um, going and making disciples of all nations. um, To me meant let's go witness and bring people to Jesus. And it just kind of stopped there. Um, And I held on to that understanding for a long time. I mean, well into high school. Um, And it wasn't start until I started growing in my faith that I started to understand um, how it's so much more than that. As far as discipleship growing up, I would say um, there really wasn't any. I had a very strong, still do have a very strong um, mother in her faith, and she has been consistently pouring into me um, and sometimes asking me those hard questions and doing life with me and still does that um, to this very day. I'm very thankful. Um, But as far as any type of structured discipleship, for me, there just really wasn't any until I would even argue probably college for me. Yeah, that makes sense. What about you? For me, um, it was kind of the same, but through the church, like with the WANA leaders and Sunday school teachers and some of my friends' parents, I mean, they're very instrumental in like helping grow my biblical knowledge Yeah. Um, and kind of that. But in college, it was really, I went to a Christian college, so it's pounded into me like a little bit more what disciples is discipleship is, but it was also more on the evangelism mm-hmm. side. Um, and so the older I got, the more I felt like I hadn't really had an older person pour into me other than my mom. But looking back, I mean, there were people, they just didn't walk every stage of life with me. So. Yeah. And I, I did used to think like you, Kaylee, that um, go and make disciples, like go and tell people, tell people about Jesus. Stop. Mm-hmm. Like that is kind of what it was. But it wasn't until I was in high school when, you know, like you're involved in the youth ministry and there are these um, interns that they bring in that are older women, older guys um, to help lead Bible studies and take the groups on events. Um, And that is when I kind of got a picture of like mentoring and I had older women pouring into me in those times. And that's when I was like, I want to be like them. You know, like, I want to pour into younger people. And so I feel like I got a true glimpse of what discipleship looked like at that time. And so when we talk about how we um, have been discipled or haven't, let's talk about what discipleship is, especially with women. Um, Immediately, I think, of course, you know, Matthew 28, go and make disciples. Like, that is the core of the local church. So that is the core of women's discipleship. And when I think about our call to grow spiritually and grow as like women of faith, I think about, you know, Titus 2, what we're always pretty familiar with. Um, And let me read that real quick. It says, but you are to proclaim things consistent with sound teaching. Older men, and I know we're talking about older men, but right after it it says in the same way. Mm -hmm. So older men are to be self-controlled, worthy of respect, sensible and sound in faith, love and endurance. In the same way, older women are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers, not slaves to excessive drinking. They are to teach what is good so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands and to love their children, to be self-controlled, pure, workers at home, kind, and in submission to their husbands so that God's word will not be slandered. 
And do y'all feel like that's like actually age old women with younger women or like spiritually mature women with spiritually immature? Y'all have any thoughts on that? I used to think it was age old, but the more I've studied it and been around other women that are only a few years older than me um, and some that are younger than me, I feel like it it does, you know, we can all be in different stages spiritually. And sometimes an older woman may not be what I need as a spiritual mentor and someone closer to my age has been. And so Mm -hmm. I don't think it always has to be age. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the Lord is good in that he saves multiple ages, right? From young to old. And so um, practically speaking, if you have a um, 65-year-old woman who has just come to know Jesus for the first time, um, to put that stipulation that she can only be discipled from someone age 66 and up, (laughs) you know, it's just not, it's not practical. um, And it doesn't make sense when you really boil it down and think about it. So yeah, I would say it's more speaking to spiritual maturity versus Mm -hmm. actual age. Yeah. And it reminds me of the scripture about like, do not let anyone look down on you because of age, but in love and life and faith and purity, set an example for all believers. And that was something like, even when I was younger and 26, 27 and stepping into um, leading women's ministry, I'm like, what the heck? I'm not even married. I don't have any kids. Who am I? But that scripture meant a lot to me to know that I can still um, have influence and impact by the way, what God is doing in my life. I can still share that with others and teach others. And I think a lot of times we forget that we need other women and other women need us, you know. And sometimes we do think it has to be the older aged woman or the younger aged woman, but it doesn't have to look like that. Yeah. Any other thoughts on what discipleship is for women? I think if I had to just um, maybe compact it, sum it up, I might say um, basically doing life with other women that's rooted in in scripture and getting to know God more. Um, Of course, with the um, realm of accountability in there, um, but it's so much more, and I know Chad's talked about this before too, it's so much more than just a Bible study. Yeah. Um, There's accountability there, there's vulnerability, um, and it really is just sharing your life with one another and sharing how God is working in you, what he's teaching you, Um, for your benefit, but then for the encouragement of other ladies that you're walking through um, that discipleship path with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a joy to come alongside other people. It really is. It's hard. It's hard work. Maybe that's something that kind of keeps us fearful or keeps us distance from it is because it can get really messy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting involved in people's lives, accountability, spiritual growth. We're talking about sin in our lives. Like, who likes that, Mm -hmm. you know? But there is joy in that. There is joy in seeing people go from where they are to where God wants them to be. And I know both of you are super intentional. Like when I think about people who are intentional with others, I think of y'all. And so that's why I asked you to be on this podcast. (laughs) You're like, well, okay. (laughs) And so it's selfish. I need it. (laughs) Hey, we do need it. And it's challenging. But like why, what keeps you being intentional with others? Like, why do you do that? For me, I've just been in so many seasons of loneliness, and I just really needed women as friends. And I think for many years, I just waited for other people to reach out to me and finally came to the point where I was like, you know, God's calling me to step out. If they're too afraid and maybe they are too busy, but they can just say no. And almost every time I invite someone to do something, they say yes. And so to me, that just shows like, you know, Maybe that's my role is just to be the one that invites people and I need that. I need friends and normally they do too. Yeah, (laughs) that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I I think waited around too long Um, and that's just pride and, uh, you know, woe is me. Like nobody's asking to disciple me and (laughs) that's not a story. Um, And then it finally got to the point where, hey, I'm yes, I need to be discipled, but I'm called to disciple Mm -hmm. as a follower of Christ. That's a command. Um, And so I think especially when this pandemic hit, it just became so evident um, when kind of everything was stripped away and all of a sudden we couldn't come together for corporate worship and we couldn't just call up a friend and say, hey, let's go grab some coffee real quick. Um, Just the need for discipleship, it was there before, but I feel like it was just magnified um, in that moment. And then too, as a mother, um, to 
three bio babies and then two bonus girls right now. I just want to model that for them. I want them to see what discipleship looks like um, in the home and then also out, you know, um, in the world too. And and being intentional with friendships and relationships that God has given to you. And so I think just setting that model um, has been a big motivator for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, to think about the fact, like, I think it was in John, like, 17 or something, where Jesus is saying, like, you know, I pray that all of the believers, all of the disciples would come together and be unified so that they would believe that I am the Son of God, you know. And there's power in seeing, like, the messages, the life transformation that comes out of discipleship. And um, back to what, like, Chad always says, discipleship fuels evangelism. And to see the unity that comes out of discipleship. And when we are growing in our faith, we're more intentional with others. We're more intentional with the lost. We're more intentional with unbelievers. And that is where, like, the power of God shows itself, you know. Like, people believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life because they see how we live our lives and how we're willing to make time and make room for other people. Even the hard people, you know, and the tough situations, but it's what we're called to do. And so both of you are stay-at-home moms, so you work inside the home. And it's a lot of work because um, I know that you guys work hard to love your families and your kids. And um, so talking about, like, discipleship for your season of life, like, what does that look like for you? How do you make time for discipleship in your season? For me, I've just been doing more in the evenings, um, especially during the pandemic since everyone has their kids at home and um, so, some people are fearful to come out. But um, I've also had my home open to people um, during the pandemic, but also before. We did a lot of coffee dates at my house yeah. and play dates. and. Um, Sometimes I go out for lunch, but not very often. <laughs> that seems to be the mo- the easiest yeah. is to have people in your home and the kids can play together and that gives you time to, to visit together. Yeah. Um, it is a difficult transition, though. That's why we kind of started doing our D group at night because when the kids are there, it's very distracting. And so yeah. we initially thought that would work, but it is hard to keep your conversation centered on the Lord. and. Um, I have an 11 year old, and so he wants to be a part of that conversation. Which That's is okay, cool. Okay, except <laughs> some some of our struggles, we don't really want him to be here. So, um, but yeah, coffee dates really have saved me. Yeah, having play dates and coffee. So dates. you did try having your discipleship group at home with the kids, kind of doing their own thing. Well, kind of, yeah. But it seemed to be more distracting. Yeah, and so once in a while, I mean, as a mom, and it's hard for us sometimes to have a spouse at home or a yeah. sitter. So sometimes. We, someone has to bring their kids, and they always behave. So Yeah. But got to do what you got to do. Yep. Try what about you? Um, we do our, as far as actual D group, the structured, um, we do ours once a week in the evening time away from kids. Um, and I would just encourage anybody, no matter what season, to just um, find a time, like when you form your group, to just find a time that everybody can commit to course there's going to be things that come up that you don't expect Mm -hmm. um but a time that you can be whether it's kid free or you know you're not going to be working during that time um that you can all meet together because it is very hard to have god-centered conversation when you've got all this stuff going on um and if it's done the way that the model you know tells us the model that we're using it should just be an hour to an hour and a half so you're talking hour hour and a half once a week where you can put aside that stressful project at work Mm -hmm. and you can put aside all the kids needs for you and you can just take that hour and a half with other women and um, encourage one another stay focused on what God is telling you not what the world is telling you not what all those children are telling you all the time (laughs) Um, and it's just it's refreshing Um, and no matter what season of life you're in if you can just find an hour and a half and then just don't forget you know your resources within the church body um put a post out on the east side page like hey Mm -hmm. we've got a mama who's a single mom and she doesn't have that much support is there anybody that would be willing to just watch her kid for an hour i mean one hour a week is there anybody Um, or maybe two or three people that could switch off so that it's literally once a month you watch a kid for an hour 
and just, um, you know, use the church. People mm-hmm. are willing. They just don't know how to help sometimes. Yeah. So. And I like how you said, like, the time limit. Because let's be honest, we've all been in groups when, like, two hours later, we're still sitting there. Mm-hmm. And it's like, really? Mm-hmm. But I just love that, like, hey, because for my group, I'm like, an hour and 15, and we're out of here. Not because they don't love y'all, but because, like, we have to stay structured and keep the main thing the main thing. And so um, in my group, three no, two out of the four of us do work outside of the home, and so we meet, okay, this last week we met at 6 a.m., mm-hmm. and it was a challenge because I'm not a morning person, but what what are, what are people doing at 6 a.m., let's be honest, you know? And so, um, actually, this week we're going to do 6.30, <laughs> we're going <laughs> to bump it up, we're going to keep bumping it, but we're going to do 6.30, and it, like, just starting my morning off like that was super helpful for me, mm-hmm. you know, and it's one of those things where it doesn't, for us, it doesn't take another night away, and so we're able to just, like, kind of not get it over with, but, like, get it done in the mornings and be on our way, and so um, tell us a little bit about the situation where you had um, a teenager in your home, and that's a disciple relationship that you have. Yeah, sure. Um, so... About two weeks before we got our foster placements, um, we had a 16-year-old girl come stay with us. She's a young mama, and so she got to kind of just experience what our life was like um, (laughs) pre-crazy, I guess you would say. Um, So she got to kind of see our how we lived our life. And then I think the Lord's been really sweet um, to use her and to teach me um, and to use me and teach her as we've kind of walked through this transition into foster care and what it looks like taking two more in our house and how you manage that um, while I mean, I do fail regularly, but while trying to keep God the center of it all. And so um, I know that she has learned things um, from us and how we um, how we try to weave scripture throughout the day um, into the way that we live our lives. And then, um, like I said earlier, the Lord's just been really sweet to use her to teach us too. So um, it's been really sweet to just walk alongside her. And um, I know it's like a buzzword or whatever, but it's just very organic. Like it hasn't <laughs> yeah. been... Um, come on into my house. Let me disciple you. You know, it's just very like. It's just happened. Yeah. Let me get to know you. You can get to know me. You can see how I live my life. I can see how you're living your life. And we can just um, kind of just link arms and yeah. go forward together. And it kind of started as just she needed somewhere to go during the day, right? Right. Mm-hmm. So it's almost yeah. like teenage child care, but turned into so much more. Yeah. Which is yeah. so cool because you can see the fruit of that in her life. And even, like, other people have shared that they have seen cool things come from that. And so I love that your family has, I like to use the phrase, made room. Because disciple, when I think of discipleship, I think of hospitality. We are making room for other people and allowing God to use us in the lives of other people, but also to let other people into our lives. And that's a hard thing to do because we like to wear masks. <laughs> no pun intended, you know. Yes. And we like to um, that be That first prideful. week, I think she thought we might be literal angels. <laughs> we were so patient with our kids. And, like, after about two weeks, man, the mask was gone, and she saw the good, bad. She saw real ugly. life. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and she still wanted to come back, so yeah. all the praise to God. <laughs> that's cool. So, you know, no matter what season of life that we're in, you know, working at home, not working at home, being empty nesters. When those kids have left your house, like, it's almost like you have all the time in the world. Seems like it. But at the same time, sometimes we can, from what I've heard, I'm not an empty nester, but from what I've heard, they can just kind of go into isolation, you know, and just really missing the old times. And with every season that we go through, like, there's either gain or there's loss, you know, for an empty nester, like, it's that loss of the normalcy of having kids at home, or you gain, you know, when you become parents, you gain a child, or when you get married, you gain someone else, and there are times, too, when there's loss in our lives, and so we need other people to walk through those things with us, no matter whether it is a good circumstance or a not good circumstance. Um, And so we've talked a little bit about discipleship groups and how, you know, yeah, an hour and 15 minutes to hour and a half and three to five women, three to five men. Um, My group meets early in the morning. Y'all's meets in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Um, What, like, tell me some of the good things that have come out of your groups. Like, what are some things that you're seeing? 
Well, for ours, I think it's just kind of a recommitment to spending time in God's Word on a regular basis and the accountability. Um, scripture memorization has been huge. Yes. Um, some of them, I think, struggle a little bit with it, and I haven't memorized in years. Um, most of my, the verses I know are from a childhood. Mm-hmm. And so it's been cool to see that we can memorize, and we are moms that have lots of distractions, but we can memorize God's Word. and Yeah. Um, and I just know that it'll come back to me, just like things that I learned as a child. And mm-hmm. so that's been encouraging. And just to have a small group that not only meets around God's Word, but then during the week there's always conversation that's going on virtually yeah. about things in life and stuff. So there is a feeling of community Connection, when most yeah. of us are not connecting with other people at the moment. Yeah, so. and hiding God's Word in our heart. That's something I'm not disciplined to do, so I'm excited about being disciplined in that area or being held accountable in that area. One of my girls, I was like, listen, text me because I usually wait till the last minute to do all my reading. You know, like, oh, no, we're meeting tomorrow. I got to catch up. And so she's been texting me almost every day. It's kind of annoying, <laughs> but, like, I need it. So I'm held accountable. Like, yes, I need to do that, you know, and I want to be better at that Mm -hmm. and so it's kind of funny how that's going what about yours I think accountability is probably the biggest one for us Um, so we do our scripture memorization then we kind of do our Bible discussion um, of what we did for the week and then at the end of it we do our prayer request and along with our prayer request we do um, we call it a response but it's basically what do we want to be held accountable for this next Mm -hmm. week Um, And it can be something as small as I want to do my Bible reading every day instead of all three or all five at the end. Um, Or it can be something, you know, massive. Um, It's just whatever you decide. And just to know I'm communicating this. I've said it out loud to three different people. Right. And next week when we meet together, they're going to ask me, how did you do this week? (laughs) You know, there's that added accountability Mm -hmm. there. Um, And it's so easy in this world that we live in, even amidst a pandemic, we're so busy and it's so easy to make excuses. I didn't have time to spend with the Lord today, but if you know, there's going to be people that are like, Hey, yeah, did you spend time with the Lord today? (laughs) There's an added accountability there. And I think that's been very beneficial for every single person in our group. Yeah. And that's one thing that I'm praying through this, not only for myself and for my group, but for other women is that being Uh, spending time with God would be a joy and a true desire of our hearts that we would hunger for that more than anything else because out of that foundation everything else would just overflow you know Mm -hmm. everything else would just fall into place and oftentimes we wonder you know what is God's will for my life do I want to go this way or this way take this job or this job but instead like he calls us to look more like him well how do we know how to look more like him and that's to be in his word Um, and to do it right alongside other believers. We're not doing it on our own. So we're wrapping up. It's been so good to be with y'all. Thanks for sharing. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, Before we go, though, I want to pray for women who um, are listening, just that we would be the wives, the moms, the Christ followers that we are called to be. Um, But before, if anybody is interested in being in a discipleship group, wants to learn more, let me know. Um, Contact me at emily at myeastside.tv. I'll be happy to get you connected with more information and resources. Um, But as we wrap up, let's pray. Um, Does anyone want to pray? I can. Okay, (laughs) perfect. Thanks. Father God, we just um, thank you so much for this opportunity to come together and have a conversation about discipleship, about what it is, about how that looks practically in our lives, Lord, um, for the busy mom, for maybe the single mom, to maybe the um, young single woman, to maybe the older empty nester, Lord, every stage of life, you have called us to be disciples and to make disciples, Father. And so we pray today um, that every woman watching this podcast or listening to this podcast um, would just take a moment to meditate and to reflect on their own lives and Lord to just be obedient to you and whatever that looks like for their life in that in taking that next step um, towards discipleship father I pray if you are leading anyone to be in a discipleship group that they would reach out to Emily um, or to me or even Rebecca or even other any other woman in the church that they would just speak it out loud hey I would I need to be discipled how do I do that or hey I want to disciple women how do I do that God just give them boldness and courage um, to step out in faith and to be obedient to you 
Lord, I thank you for Emily and her leadership in this. I thank you for her desire to disciple women um, and to bring others to, to the saving faith in you, God. I pray that you would make much of this podcast, that your name would be glorified over it all. And Father, that more than anything, that people would come to know you and then never stop pursuing you. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a great week and don't forget to make disciples. That's right. Thanks for tuning in to Eastside Groove Podcast. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share our podcast on Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. We'll see you in the next one.